Okay, this is Carl. And Carl is our new epic person in our town. Actually, just introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Carl. I am new here. Okay. State your name, your age, your phone number, social security number. <laughs> like that. Um, okay, what okay. You auditioned for Epic, right? Mm hmm Auditioned, do you even say audition? Interviewed? Interviewed for Epic. Mm -hmm. Um, did you go through a recruiter or just straight to Epic? Um, actually, long story short, I did reply I did apply to a recruitment agency. Mm -hmm. And this was when the whole MERS thing was happening. And what actually happened was they completely forgot about my application. So I emailed them and I'm not naming the agency. <laughs> I, I emailed them just asking them about my application. They're like, I'm sorry, due to the MERS, a lot of schools are closed, you know. So I just emailed Epic to see if, like, what is, like, where is my application in the process. Mm -hmm. They said they never received it. Oh my gosh. So I just ended up applying through Epic um, immediately, and within 24 hours, like, I got an interview. Wow. Okay. I went through Gepic, and now apparently Gepic is part of Epic, so I guess they work one of the one and the same. But cool. So before that, where are you from? I'm from Philadelphia, just Ooh. outside of Philadelphia. So. I don't know what I'm cheering. I'm from Maryland. I don't know anything. <laughs> okay. How long have you been in Korea? I've been in Korea for about four months now. Yes, August, August. Mm -hmm. Okay, since you applied directly through Epic, what was your interview like? Um, my interview was pretty laid back, actually. I mean, he just asked questions about like culture shock, mm -hmm. um, you which know, you're completely used to. Yeah, yeah. completely used to, <laughs> because I taught in Prague before exactly. this. Exactly. Um, and he also asked me questions about like class management and um, like what research have I done on Korea. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay, what about the process getting your paperwork? Since you didn't have to go through an agency. Well, at first you went through the agency and then they obviously messed that up. Did yeah. you have to do it again through Epic? Was it easier? Um, I wouldn't say it was easier. It was very stressful mm -hmm. because I couldn't get any of the paperwork done living in another country. Um, I couldn't get the FBI criminal background check, so I had my interview July 5th, and I had to get all my papers in to them by July 15th. So that was really stressful. Oh, gosh. And then I got accepted July 27th, so it's actually a quick process. Yes, you were like... I get shit done. Jeez! <laughs> I know. Um, let's keep this PG. <laughs> okay. Okay. I came with Gepix, so I never had, like... A first comer orientation. We had our in orientation two months of being. I'm sorry, he's. My dog's licking his pillow. <laughs> we had our orientation two months after we came to Korea, which made no sense because we were really. We were already adjusted. And then they're like, oh yeah, now you are gonna go to an orientation to teach you how to teach in a. Mm -hmm. wherever we are teaching and stuff so I wish we had the epic orientation so I could have met like other people because when I came here I didn't know anybody at all if I had an orientation I would have been able to know some people so how was the epic orientation for you epic orientation was like freshman college orientation <laughs> that's that's the only that's the best way to explain it, mm -hmm. um, except for it was 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. And since we were jet lagged from coming back from coming from the States, it was like really difficult to stay awake in some of the classes. Do you think it was important what they talked about? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Some of the things I would have liked more information on, but they just kind of touched the surface on it. Do you think you could have done without? No, I needed the orientation. Okay. Yeah. It really did prepare me for coming here, like teaching here, but again, expectations were different for me. Mm -hmm. That's messed up. <laughs> okay, did you know anybody before you came to Korea? 
No, I did not. Um, oh, scary. Yeah, that's, yeah. No, I didn't know anyone. Like I said, I applied to the program late, and there was this whole, like, epic Facebook fall um, acceptance. Yeah. And I... Apparently, I didn't. I don't know how to join things. I'm not very savvy. <laughs> so everybody knew each other from orientation. Like they Facebook friend each other. Yeah. Like see who's coming from which place. Like airplane. And I was like, eh. you it's okay. cool. I didn't have Facebook. So <laughs> for Gepic, I literally just didn't know. It was the person, the teacher I replaced that contacted me through um, email, mm -hmm. and everybody thought I was like an old lady. Because I didn't have Facebook and they didn't know where to find me, so they're like, oh my gosh, she doesn't even have technology. <laughs> like, how are we gonna contact her? Yeah, okay. So, how hard is it to make friends here? Well, it's easier for you because I guess the epic orientation, mm -hmm. but overall. Yeah, if it wasn't for the epic orientation, I would. <laughs> uh, um. Yeah, it's very depressing. <laughs> I mean, coming here, it's a great group of friends because um, you're so close knit mm -hmm. in a really small town. But um, it's very difficult. Yeah, I think to be honest, I think it's difficult, especially when you have like an Asian descent, because you kind of just like blend in. Yeah. So. Oh. Yeah. But you have us. Yeah, but then you guys are leaving me. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Tough, tough, tough. Okay, coming here. Did you speak any Korean? No. No. Do you think it's what's it? Do you think you have to be able to speak Korean to come teach abroad here? Yes, depending where you're placed. But of okay. course, you don't know where you're really placed. Um, because my friend in Daejeon can get away with not learning any Korean. Mm -hmm. But like, if you're in a small town like us, you definitely need to learn Korean. Yes. I didn't speak Korean coming here and with the whole ajumas in the streets, you have to know what they're saying. You don't, okay, so you don't have to know, <coughs> please don't die on this. You don't have to know Korean to come here, but <laughs> you learn along the way by force, especially if you're in the country. Yeah. Like, yeah, like you said, you can get away with it like in Seoul and stuff because everybody's going to speak some sort of English, mm -hmm. but in the country, you're going to learn Korean. So you don't have to know it, but you're going to practice it when you get here. Okay. Uh, one favorite thing so far about Korea? The food. <laughs> the kimchi. Kimchi is really your stuff. No. I, don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'll eat kimchi, but yeah. I think it's just the food and the the food culture around it, I think. Yes. Eat a lot. Yeah, I think the one aspect I do like about Korea is the food culture because it's it's more of a welcoming, you eat together, yeah. you share things, even germs. Yeah. Um, but it's okay. But it's coming from a teaching in a country where it's very like, like, I hate to say this, Russian, very cold. Mm -hmm. Coming to Korea, it's very warm. Yeah. It's true. Okay. Worst thing about Korea so far. Worst thing. The <laughs> area that we live in, to be honest. It's, again, it's the area. It's, you're not close to anything. You don't yeah. have amenities. And it, I think it's harder to adjust. If someone who has never lived abroad comes to this kind of area, mm -hmm. it would be so hard for them to adjust. Okay. Okay, we live literally as close to the DMZ as you can get and it's the country of the country though country-wise we're the most city country if you kind of get it like we have Daiso and we have Lotte Mar it's like we have like things like around here but we don't have um deodorant. movie theater we don't have deodorant we don't, have deodorant. we don't have deodorant. We don't have just like things like that. So it is country. I don't think it's that bad, but that's because I've been here two years and I kind of adjusted and I have a car. So I think when you have a car, it's a lot easier. It but is. Yeah, it's just 
two hours to get to the nearest city. Like mm -hmm. Seoul's two hours, Chuncheon's two hours. It's yeah, <laughs> yeah. And another thing with Gepic, um, I interviewed for my position, so I knew I was coming into the country. So it wasn't too much of a shock. So it was something like I kind of like. I think I can do it. Let me give it a try. But for Epic, you don't know where you're placed. I right? literally found out seven o'clock before I had to move the next day, and I didn't even like. I just pulled it up on Google Maps, and I was like, "Oh my god, I'm literally by the DMZ. This is not okay." And literally four days before was the shoot shootout. Oh, <laughs> the shootout between North Korea and South Korea, and it it's wasn't like, a shootout, but. but yeah. <laughs> it was... <laughs> oh no! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of... But one thing though, um, nobody here cares about the whole North Korea, South Korea thing as much as foreigners do, as much as Americans do. Like, we'll get like phone calls from back, I'm like, oh my gosh, are you okay? Like, it's going down. And like, the Koreans here are like, ah, North Korea, who do they think they are? You know. They don't care. Nothing's going to happen. And I think, actually, I honestly think we're in the safest place possible. We have all the military around us. Literally, like, military guys live in my building. Okay, so, I mean, if we're going to have a war, no. probably safest place. They'll probably hit Seoul first, actually, because they want to hit the capital. Not, I mean, yeah. there's... I mean, unless they want to take Daiso, <laughs> North Korea can have Daiso. Hey, I love Daiso, okay? So, it's, I can okay. see that. For those of you that don't know Daiso, <laughs> it's the American or Korean equivalent to Target. Yes! That's the best way of explaining yeah. it. Love Daiso. Okay, school! How is your school? Like, okay, do you like your school? I do like my yeah. school. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things before moving here was that I had the impression that Korean students all worked hard, <laughs> all did their homework. Yeah. Such obedient little kids. Okay, what grade do you teach? I teach uh, third grade, fourth grade, and fifth and sixth. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Nice. Um, how many classes a week? I have 20, 22 classes a week, okay. oh, nice. including my after school classes. It's 24, and then I teach the English teachers as volunteers, so that's mm -hmm. 20. How do your after school classes work? What classes do you have? Oh, what do you mean how they work? Okay, for after school, I have from first grade to sixth grade, like different times. Do you also have that, or do you just have <clears throat> like sixth grade? I just have sixth grade, and it's the advanced sixth graders, so that's really nice. Nice. Uh, okay, um, wow, that's really good. Mm -hmm. I wish I had that. What else? Um, What's your favorite grade? Third grade, actually. Third and... Yeah, third grade. Yeah. Yeah, because I think they're the most obedient ones. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And how are your kids? <clears throat> kids behavior-wise or kids <sighs> academic-wise? Okay, let's start with the easiest one. Academic-wise. Academic-wise, it's... Okay, mm -hmm. you living in the country, you can see this kids that go to the Hogwarts or English academies after school, yeah. and those that don't. So you have like varied levels in your class, which is really difficult sometimes because you know the kids that are more advanced, you have to give them a little bit more of a challenge, or it's boring for them. Yeah, and also a thing with um, teaching in the country is you have a lot of farmers' kids. And they know they're going to stay here, and they don't really have any aspirations for anything else. So they would be like, well, I know I'm only in fifth grade, sixth grade, but I'm going to be on the farm. I don't need to learn any English, so that gets kind of difficult. So It's very yeah. hard to motivate those students. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And especially there's this... Um, what is the no child left behind? I don't really understand. Is that like you... Like, pass them. Pass them whatever, right? Because that English, is Korea. <laughs> Engli for English, it doesn't matter mm -hmm. um, for them. Mm -hmm. Like, I have some sixth graders that can't even read yeah. English or write their name in English, which is yeah. um, it's okay. kind of sad, actually. Yeah. Okay, behavior-wise, our sweet little angels, how are the kids? Hmm. Um... 
They're great. <laughs> okay, this is how someone this is how someone explains it to me when I was I first arrived at orientation. Mm -hmm. They're like, Korean students, you're pretty much a Pokemon trainer. These kids are running around hitting each other, mm -hmm. and all you know is their name, and sometimes you don't even know their names. So oh my god. They. Back, like, I think it's a different culture because if you hit someone back in the States, I mean, you get sent to the principal's office right away. Mm -hmm. When you hit, like, you see your students hit each other and it's like nothing. Yeah. Did you they, know they, they, they kill each other out there. Actually, it was more, um, the girls are really violent towards the guys. Like, they would like, like, and I'm just like, that hurt. And they'll just like, you know, walk it off walk it off. I'm just like, I don't know. Well, my, I think out of everybody in this area, because I still teach Gyeonggi do, and you guys are Gangwon do, but one of the, I have one of the smallest schools. Mm -hmm. And my kids are really, really sweet. And they're the least privileged, I think, because I think our, our school is pretty small. It's not that small. How many kids would you have like in a class? Um, 25, 24. Okay, me on average, like my fifth grade class, I have five kids. My sixth grade class, <coughs> I have eight. Okay, so on average, I will have like eight kids in a class. Oh, you know, and you guys will have like 20 something. So, like, it's more personal for me. Like, I know each one by name. And mm -hmm. I mean, I've been with them two years now, so it's like I know them. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they're crazy, but now they involve me in their craziness. Like, before they do something crazy, they'll be like, Teacher, teacher, look! And I'm just like, oh, What? I don't need to be a part of this. Oh, yeah. That is, that is true. Um, okay. Did you have any expectations coming here? Yes. Did you? I did. Okay, what were your expectations? <laughs> well, of course, um, my expectation was that um, I was gonna be a city. Oh, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> um, everything was high tech because you always hear about Korea being very high tech. Yeah. Mm, no. Not not where we live. At least but the internet. Like, internet's really fast. The internet's fast. Hands down. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. And what then is? the disciplined students. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> um. Did I have expectations? Um. I didn't really have an expectation because I was coming to the country, so I didn't really know what to expect. I just knew it was going to be far from everything. But kid-wise, I did expect to come to a school where these kids are in their uniforms sitting at their desk and like, Yay, sensei name, yay, <laughs> like all the time. No. no, kids will be kids and they act the exact same way everywhere else. Like, I love them to death, but... It's like teaching regular class back home. And I think that it's also the perception that movies have. Um, yeah. That these kids are, you know, very obedient. Um, and I think elementary is the best. Because once you get to middle school and high school, they're even wor worse. Yeah, that's why so we have the best, best grades. Yeah. Um, what else? Um, are you staying another year? Yes, I am. Why? If you hate it so much. No, you don't hate it. But why? Why are you staying another year? Um, I think, I well, I know for a fact I really want the city. I want Seoul or like mm -hmm. Daejeon or Busan. Just to, for their south. Just to get that city experience. To see, you learn about yourself being in the countryside, but I also yeah. want to learn about myself when I'm in the <laughs> city. Being able to <laughs> have a social life. Like, yeah more yeah. opportunities to go out not feel so isolated the the country's social life is mostly getting on a bus waiting not waiting but driving two hours to try to get to the city or being forced to interact with the other teachers around you mm -hmm. now i'm not saying like i love you guys like <laughs> it's not like, yeah. I'm, I like i'm forced to be with you guys but in the country like as small of an area as we are, you're kind of, you know, like this, this is the social life. Like going to each other's houses, mm -hmm. playing cards against humanity, eating, 
having Thanksgiving dinner together. But I guess if you were in the city, you know, you could go to many other places and you can choose your friends. You guys here, it's kind of, we are what we have. Mm -hmm. This is it. Which it isn't bad because you make new friends, but. It's a very tight knit crew, which I do yeah. like. I don't think I would have felt the same way in Seoul, but. That's true, that's true. Okay. How does it feel like being a Filipino in Korea? <clears throat> I actually, before I moved here, I did do some research. Mm -hmm. And Filipinos are actually not really welcomed here. Mm -hmm. um, because, I mean, they are so close. They take away, apparently they take away jobs from the Koreans. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think it's harder for, not harder, but... They just look at me and again I blend in so they expect that I do speak Korean mm -hmm. even though I'm not. Yeah. Also, do they know what you are? No. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually, people are very confused by what I am because when other Filipinos see me they think I'm like a half breed and uh -huh. it's something like out of Harry Potter which I'm not. I'm full Filipino uh -huh. but I just don't have some of the Filipino yeah. features like I'm taller. I don't have the Filipino nose, so, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, they, they either think I'm Vietnamese, Thai, mm -hmm. but I think in the country, nobody really cares, I don't know if that matters, they don't, they don't really care, like, they know you're different, or like, you're a foreigner, or whatever, but they don't really care, mm -mm. like, I don't know. Like being black here, they are like, I'm black. There's <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, but they don't care. They're like, oh, we cooking. <laughs> okay, they're like, oh, we cook. Yeah, nah. Okay. <laughs> you know, so, but uh, that's country wise, you know. The old people here, especially in this area, I think they're really chilled about it. Like, they stare, obviously, always stare, but. Yeah, get used to being stared at. <clears throat> oh my gosh. Yeah. And actually, one thing that does bother me a lot is mm -hmm. is like at least in America there's a lot of different cultures but I was brought up in a yeah. predominantly white area <laughs> and so like you you know you get used to it but yeah. I I think it's kind of funny when like Caucasians come here or white people come here and they're like I just feel so left out you know and I'm like I honestly want to be like shut up okay. I mean, people, people deal with it all the time and this is what you're gonna yeah. get living abroad mm -hmm. So the funny thing is, in our whole group, like we're all minorities except for one person. There's only one white person. That's it's kind of shocking. I mean, yeah, it really they didn't bring it up on Thanksgiving. Yeah. And we're like, wait a minute, you're the minority. <laughs> I think she felt a little comfortable, but it's kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so I think that I treated dif differently. Uh, yeah. What do you think? Um, I do have to add this because mm -hmm. we do have well. There is two. There is two guys that. Well, one was here, but he he his contract ended, and yeah. there's another guy that's here, and I think you also have to be prepared for a guy's experience versus a girl's experience mm -hmm. here. Um, again, it's a very male-dominated society, and I think yeah. being a girl it, teacher is a lot easier than being a guy teacher, just yeah. hearing from their experiences. Yeah. And this um. All the teachers at my school, well, my May school, all the teachers are females, except for the science teacher. So yeah, it's different seeing a male teacher, so that might be... Yeah, so just be prepared for that if you are a guy, just... It, it could go either way for you guys. That's true. Okay, living as an expat. Okay, <laughs> for somebody who wants to move abroad, what tip would you give them for interacting and befriending complete strangers, befriending other expats or other foreigners abroad. What are some tips that you can give them? Um, well, hopefully you have traveled before because it won't be <laughs> such of a culture shock, but yeah. I think if you travel more, you, you possess a quality of just letting go and going with the flow. Mm -hmm. So I think you have to have that personality or if you come here, you'll definitely change. Um, I think it's just, yeah, I think that's the main thing of just, just go with it. Mm -hmm. Go right? with the flow. Right. Letting things go. Cause yeah. <clears throat> oh. People are really different. 
And another thing is, I'm sure you'll hear about this or experiences, is the Korean surprise. The Korean surprise? Yes, how your classes get canceled. Oh my gosh! <laughs> your classes will get canceled and they okay. will not tell you, so oh. you're sitting in the class expecting your students, but they'll never show up. Um, sometimes you get told about teacher dinners as you're leaving for the day. Yeah. Oh, by the way, um, we need a paper due by tomorrow. <laughs> what? <laughs> Have you had that? Yes, it happens. It happens all the time. You kind of get used to it. At first, you... Because, I don't know, I think we still have this whole mentality that it's so organized here. Like, I don't know, I can't think it'll be so organized because... But my co-teachers, like, they have tons of paperwork, you know? So I'm like, okay, they are on top of things. But, like, literally, you would be, like, I leave at 4.30 and, like, 4.28. They'll be like, oh, yeah, there's a teacher's dinner. Yeah, and then there you... There is? Yeah. Yeah. And the cancel class, I mean, I don't mind, but tell me. And, like, it... I don't know. It's, like, kind of part of... You don't even, like, after a while, you don't even stress about it. There, it comes like, oh, yeah, this class has been moved. Okay. Yes. That's and what happens. Also, not classes being canceled, but when they move classes. So, say your after-school class is usually Tuesday, Thursday. But, you know, you're sitting there at your desk <laughs> on Wednesday, and, hey, are, aren't you teaching right now? No. Oh, my gosh. So that's never happened to me. That's actually happened to me, and I had nine minutes to prepare a lesson. Um, Jeez. Which was very stressful, but now I learned, hey, always plan, as soon as you're done that lesson, plan awesome. for the next one right there. And how do you like it so far? Well, you stayed two years. So. Yeah, I, I must like it, kind of. Uh, for, what it, for what it is, I really like it. Um, do I regret it? No, never. Um, would I do it again? Uh... <laughs> Yeah, it's it's weird. I I like it. I don't regret the decision coming here. I I I like. The... <laughs> Stop laughing. I really I really like my school. I really like my co teachers, and the people that I met around here. So it's it's been a wonderful experience. Um, if <laughs> there was nothing else for me to do, I would definitely come back to Korea. It's one of those things, like, it's, it's, it was great for what it was, and then now it's time to move on. Um, yeah, if I had to do it again, like, if I had to go back in time and make this decision, I would make it again. You know, I would make it again, and probably aim for more city-like area. Um, but other than that, I was handed a really good deal, because... Come in here, teaching abroad, it's really, he's chasing his tail, okay. It's really, it's really the cards you're dealt. Like, you have no say, really, how it's going to end up. And they don't do the interviews anymore, I think, because Gepic has moved to Epic, um, I think. And so, you can get into a school and really hate it. Like, you... You can have a principal, a vice principal, who doesn't, who don't really feel that English is important to the society or important to kids or important to learn, and you will know. Like, it will reflect on how they address you and how they speak to you. And it's really important. Like, my principals, I've had two, they really loved English and they really appreciated having a foreign teacher at the school. So, I really felt. Um, needed and the kids were awesome so I'm like oh, this is great like I'm doing something here and I'm making a difference but then I've had other friends who were like my co-teacher sucks like they hate me they won't help me with anything and I just got really lucky and I think that was a plus that's what also made me stay an extra year now if I didn't have all that if I came to even if it was city wise if I came to a school where it was just like Basically, instead of teaching, I was just like a parrot or a translator or, you know, mm -hmm. like, okay, repeat after me kind of person, I probably wouldn't have stayed. And co-teacher is really important. I think a co-teacher makes or break, breaks it 
Yeah. Like if you have a really sucky cold teacher, you're not gonna want to stay. No. Cause my friend, she's actually in a city. I forget mm -hmm. which city it is. Um, and her coach, she does not have a good relationship with her co-teacher. Yeah. He, he, like you said, she's pretty much a parrot. I mean, again, she doesn't have to do any lesson planning, but she just stands in class and repeats after him. Yeah. So, I mean, her, I mean, her social life is great. Her work life just happens not to be there. I think that really plays a big part in it. Oh yeah, one expectation is fruit's really expensive here. Oh my god! It literally costs like your liver. You can't... And they don't have all the fruits. Like back home, at least, if a fruit's gonna be expensive, you know that you have all the fruits. No, they don't. No. And it's like the Philippines is really close, and you think the mangoes and bananas and coconuts, you would have more of those products, but no. And I also think it's... Again, the Korean culture, they want to keep things Korean. Yeah. Which I guess works. I don't know. But for a culture that was to keep things Korean, they're <coughs> very Americanized. Like, even the Konglish and everything is very Americanized. I don't know. It's like, be American, but don't be American. <laughs> you might not get it now, but once you live here, you'll understand that term. Do it or don't do it. Okay, do it, don't do it. Go. Do it. Okay, do it. I think you just learn a lot about yourself, like every, anywhere you go, you learn. And I think that's, you learn and grow. Yeah. So definitely do it. Just don't have any expectations when you come here. Because you'll either be disappointed or... Oh jeez, don't say it like that. Don't, I think what she means to say <laughs> is... <laughs> um, just set the bar, yeah. just set the standards low. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the that's a better way of saying. Don't it. expect too much and come open minded and willing to adjust. Sorry. Definitely willing to adjust because Definitely. things are different. And if you have like a special diet, okay. If you're a vegetarian or you don't eat red meat, um, that's gonna be very difficult for you. You're you're gonna have a really hard time finding. I, again, it depends where you're placed, yeah. because if you're in Seoul, you don't have to worry about that, or in the cities, but... Um, you can't be a vegetarian here. You can, but you would. They consider spam. <laughs> Flavoring, so... Yeah. Okay. I think that was it. Yes. Last words. Last words. Last words? Um, last, last words. This okay. Again, you'll really get to know yourself, and just pre just be prepared for the stages of living abroad. And that's my best advice to you is the first part again is the honeymoon phase where mm. it's all great, it's new experience. And then it starts to sink in when you start getting adjusted. And again, if you've never like if you haven't studied abroad mm. or had an opportunity to travel, you kind of you kind of really get homesick. So just be prepared for that too like really keep the relationship with the people back home I think is the most important because you do need that support system from living here and being home and yeah just again know the stages know yourself before coming here and what you really want from this experience is my last words what did you want from this? I really wanted to become a better teacher um, I've had experience teaching adults and I had this perception that teaching kids would be a lot easier mm -hmm. but it's actually more challenging yeah. than teaching adults and I think it has made me a better teacher because I have a different perspective on how kids learn like yeah. even though I was a kid I forgot a lot of things That's like true. more challenging but also I would say more rewarding I don't know when you see a kid, like, after a few, like, oh, I taught them that, oh, yeah. Yeah. And especially if they're very shy, and then you start to see them, like, say hi to you in the hallways and start forming sentences, it's like, yeah. I feel like a proud mom. I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God, you made that all by yourself. Yay. Yeah. I know. Thank you. Thank
Thank you. Thank You're you so welcome. much for answering my million <coughs> and nine questions. Well, I really appreciated it. Of course. We should have done this earlier. <laughs> and now we're going to wrap presents because it's Christmas and she's the queen rapper. I love okay, rapping so presents. I'm really excited about it. You can't get on the bed so nobody can see this and that's my dog.